Greetings everyone, today we are going to talk about a 3D printer produced by smart motor devices, Sky One. Sky One is a unique universal coordinate machine that can perform as a 3D printer, engraver or a small CNC machine. Due to easily changeable tooling heads, you will have no problem transforming your 3D printer into an engraving machine or maybe even equipping it with a pneumatic marker. Sky One uses Fuse Deposition Modeling Technology for printing, which shortly stands for FDM. FDM is an additive manufacturing technology, meaning that the object is formed by adding layers of molten filament. ABS, PLA, crystal, rubber or any other FDM compatible plastic can be used as filament. Filament is fed to the extruder, which squeezes out a thin thread of melted material and by thus forming a new layer of the printed object. After completing each layer, the printed bed moves down for the thickness of one layer, for the next layer to take place, and so on until the object is fully printed. So, Sky One consists of coordinate machine Sky One itself, material mounting bracket, which is installed into ventilation holes of the printer, plastic feeding tube and a mount for plastic feeding tube. To install it, disconnect the extruder cable, install it with the flange facing down and connect the extruder cable back again. Next we have our power cable, a USB cable and a protective case of course. This case will not only be able to protect your fingers from getting stuck into the mechanisms of the printer but also protects it from unwanted drafts. Drafts may cause unwanted damages to printed models, especially when printing with ABS plastics. Next we have our printing spray for better adhesion. It should be sprayed onto the bed before printing. It is water-based and can be easily washed from any surface. And of course with every printer there is a spool of plastic. Who is mounted onto the back of the printer onto the pre-install mount. Next we recommend to install a small filtering element. It can be made from any kind of plastic foam and uh, is meant to protect the extruder from getting of any kind of dirt in. In this case we have a small printing object with a, some plastic foam inserted into it. Next we have to feed the plastic through all the mounts and get it into the tube. Let the end of the material stick out of the tube, then press the M6 bolt on the extruder and push the material inside of it till it stops. Then gently press the white tube into the fixing hole. It should sit there quite tightly. To get the tube up, firmly push the ring beneath it and take out the tube. And now it's fixed again. Next we have to install all the needed software. Connect Sky One to the computer and to the power supply. FTDI drivers should be then automatically installed by your computer. If nothing or such of a thing happens, please find a link to the needed drivers in the description of this video. As Sky One was tested to be working with repeater host software, it is recommended to install repeater host uh, to your computer. Link can be also found in the description to this video. After you download repeater host to your computer, please install it. After installing this software, crucial step is to set it up correctly. Please make sure that printer is connected to the power supply and to the computer. We also need to check that FTTI drivers have been successfully installed and printer is now active in our system and has a valid COM port addressed to it. Next step we are going to set up our printing software. To do that first of all we have to exit the easy mode. 
Now enter printer settings. Here we are only interested in the first four tabs. Connection, printer, extruder and dimension. Connection tab should be filled in as shown on the screen, with only difference that you might have a different COM port. In this case, printer was recognized as COM25. Don't forget to hit the apply button after making all the changes. Next, we are going to the printer tab. Please follow everything you see on the screen and fill them everything the same. And don't forget the apply button. Same things goes for the extruder tab. Please carefully copy all the settings and don't forget to push the apply button. Same goes for our last tab. Please copy everything precisely and don't forget to push the apply button. After making all the changes we can make a name for our printer presets. We're done here and let's move to the next stage. For the first print we have to calibrate our printing bed. We need to align it with the plane of the extruder movement. To do that we have three special nuts on the bottom of the bed. First of them, second and the third one. To align the bed connect the printer to the computer and enter repeater host program. Next we go to the manual control tab and in the G code console we enter G28 command. After that the sensors are calibrated. Next we have to put the extruder into the position for aligning the middle screw. To do that enter a G code command G1 X0, Y145 and Z0. By turning the middle screw we need to get a minimum space between the extruder and the surface of the table. It must be set to less than a millimeter. After aligning the middle screw, return the printer to home position by entering command G28. Then we have to align next screw. To do that enter G1 X minus 100 Z0 Y0. Here we also need to align the screw that way that we have a minimum space of less than a millimeter between the extruder and the printing bed. After that return the printer to its home position by entering the G28 command. Next step is to align the last screw. G1 X100 Z0 Y0 And we perform the previous operation one more time. After all alignments are done, return the printer to the home position by entering the G28 command. We have now finished calibrating our printer and are ready for our first print. So let's get on with our first print. To make our first print we first need to add a model. To do that press the add button and choose the needed model. After that the model is added to our virtual printing surface. Using this menu we can neither copy the model remove it center it if needed rotate using three axes 
Scaling is also an option and can be performed neither using O3 or only one axis at a time. Here we also have mirroring option and so on. The black spot indicates the place where the extruder is placed. To print this object we need to slice it by layers. To do that we have a special software called Slicer. Slicer is a software that transforms models into a G-code instructions for the printer. We recommend using Slick3R Slicer. Please choose it from the menu. After that we have to choose the settings for the plastics we use when printing our model. Every plastic has its own settings. These settings can be downloaded from our website. After we download them we need to upload it into the Slicer software. To do that please press the configure button. Next go to the file, load config option and choose the needed configuration file that you have downloaded. Here we have one for ABS plastic. Now you can see that the new settings have been added, but they all have any extension, meaning that they have not yet been saved. To save setting, press the gear head, then choose the downloaded file, in this case we have ABS 04 ini and press the save button. In this case we can leave the same name. Now let's go back, as you may see the ini extension is now gone, meaning that the settings have been saved. Now we have to do the same with our printer and filament settings. All the ini extensions are gone, meaning that all the settings have been set into the control program. Now we have to close the settings window. Next in the pop-up menus we choose the settings that we have just saved. Now we check that we have ABS plastic in place and uh, a 0.4 mm extruder nozzle. Correct slicer as in slick 3R is chosen. We can uh, check our fill options but for simple models like this one no more than 30% is needed. Now we press the slice button transforming uh, the model into the G-code. After some time you will notice that a normal 3D model has turned into layers. In the printing statistics you will be able to see estimated time, the number of layers, how much of G-code and approximate length of a needed material. And now when we have our model ready to be printed we can push the connect button and start the printing of our model. Thank you for watching, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and see you next time.